Hello, welcome all of you to SST College of Arts and Commerce. This is SST Edupedia. Myself Krishna Salgaonkar. I am an assistant professor in IT department. Uh, today we are going to talk about GIS that is a principles of geographic information system course in TYIT semester 6. Topic for discussion is tessellation. Before we start uh, knowing about tessellation first we will know about geographic objects see uh, around us there are many objects and uh, on this earth you can consider there are many different different objects that objects are called as a geographic objects like land then there are trees then uh, there are many different different object roads all that considered as geographic objects non present everywhere in the study area uh, then objects are usually easily distinguished and named and their position in the space is determined by a combination of one or more of the following parameter. So when you are considering the object you have to define that object with one or more of the following parameter. So which are the parameters? First one is location, where is it, shape, what form is it, then size, how big is it and then orientation in which direction it is facing. Now, uh, how we want to use the information about a geographic object determines which of the four above parameter is required to represent it. So, what you actually want to represent on the screen, based on that, you have to use one of the parameter. We will see a few example in car navigation system or petrol uh, stations, where they are. That is important. Thus, location alone is enough to describe shape, size and orientation are not necessarily relevant. So, if we consider uh, in a car navigation system, if we are considering a petrol station, only location of that petrol station is important and the other factors like shape, size and orientation are not uh, matters. Uh, so, you can use only uh, that location as an important parameter. Now, second one is... Uh, notation for a location uh, roads uh, we are considering roads so notation of that location is important where does it begins then shape how many lanes does it have shape how many lanes does it have then size how far can one travel on it and orientation in which direction one can travel so when we are considering roads all these parameters are important so we have to consider all these parameter while representing the roads on a GIS systems. We usually do not study geographic objects in isolation, but more often we look at collection of objects viewed as a unit. See, these objects are not studied individually, single single. We are considering in a uh, all these objects in a group. Example: forest plot from forest, uh, groups of parcel from suburbs roads from a road network uh, if it is a forest plot then uh, it is a form of a different different forest or uh, trees so all these objects are considered together then uh, uh, if you are considering suburbs then different different localities considered together if you are considering roads then uh, hotels uh, industries all these things are considered while representing the road Different objects do not occupy the same location. This nat natural law of mutual non-overlap has been a guiding principle in the designing of computer representations of the geographic phenomena. We can study geographic phenomena at the more aggregated level and look at characteristics like coverage, uh, connectedness and capacity. So, uh, see when we are uh, considering this object we have to follow the nature law that is non overlapping all the objects are distinct from each other and uh, there are three more characteristics which we have to consider that is coverage connectedness and capacity which part of the road network is within 5 km of petrol station uh, when we are representing that object huh? so here in the earlier slide, I mentioned that uh, we have to look at characteristics like coverage, connectedness and capacity. So we will be talking about that. Which part of petrol network or uh, road network is within 5 km of a petrol station? 
that is a coverage question then which is the shortest route between two cities via the road network that is a connectedness question and the last is capacity question that is how many cars can optimally travel from one city to another in an hour so this type of questions also we have to consider while representing the data geographical information system now this is about the objects now when you have to define the objects boundaries are very important location shape and size are fully determined if we know an area boundary so the boundaries is a good candidate for representing it the boundaries are of two types scripts scripts that is fixed and fuzzy boundaries crisp boundaries uh, practice distinct zone of changes represented by distinct line that separates uh, various region of the boundaries and fuzzy boundaries implies an area of transition boundaries region of change see when we uh, when i'm talking about crisp boundary that is it is a uh, fix uh, it will change after many years uh, so that type of boundaries are called as crisp boundaries and there are fuzzy boundaries so fuzzy boundaries uh, if you have seen at the seashore the water level is continuously changing so if i want to draw the boundary for that water level it is not possible for me because in a day itself it is changing many times so such type of boundaries are called as fuzzy boundaries and some of the boundaries are changing after several years okay so if it is a mountain so the, if i consider the boundaries of the mountain it will change after many years so that boundaries are called as crisp boundaries and uh, the boundaries which are keep on changing like uh, seashore the level of water is keep on changing so that boundaries are called as a fuzzy boundaries crisp boundaries are more common in man made phenomena whereas fuzzy boundaries are more common with natural phenomena if it is a man made phen phenomena the crisp boundaries are there so you can consider the boundaries of the roads also that are crisp because that changes when uh, we are going to widen the road otherwise it will remain the same and fuzzy boundaries uh, are considered in case of natural phenomena like uh, if uh, there is a area with different different type of flower then uh, the boundaries of particular type of flowers are fixed so you can get a uh, different different boundaries for different different types of flowers then computer representation of geographic information now we understand what is object what is uh, boundaries now we have to understand uh, how we have to represent the same thing on a computer uh, basically what actually uh, here we are discussing see you are seeing uh, roads while traveling and uh, many times uh, we come across the roads whenever we go out now so we see the roads now the same road is represented on the map right so that thing means actually the natural phenomena we are representing on the road so that thing it's written uh, discuss over here in order to represent such a phenomena faithfully in computer memory we could either try to store as many location elevation observation pair as possible or try to find a symbolic representation of any one of this two so locations elevations uh, that you can uh, show on the screen or uh, you can use some symbols to uh, represent a particular uh, suppose if it's a hospital if it is a hotel we can use particular symbols to represent them so what are the drawbacks of this infinitely many locations it's not possible to represent all the location difficult to derive a function for large areas if the area is large it is difficult to derive a function to overcome this we store a finite but intelligent uh, intelligently chosen set of sample and then interpolate it so what we are doing now we choose some particular set of samples and then we interpolate it then uh, we are going to interpolate that particular set of samples Inter now what is interpolation so interpolation is a method of constructing new data points within the range of a distance set of known data points used to estimate values between two points so usually what is happen now when we are uh, 
representing this data so we can give the start point and the end point and in between points automatically uh, get plotted so that is called as interpolation uh, with some uh, logic uh, that boundaries are drawn interpolation is made possible by a principle called spatial auto correlation this is a fundamental principle which refers to the fact that location that are closer together are more likely to have similar values than the location that are far apart so how these points are plot so if two points are close then uh, uh, in between points are closer together and uh, if the points are at a far distance then uh, you are more likely to have uh, similar values see uh, I'm again reading that sentence this is a fundamental principle which refers to the fact that locations that are closer together are more likely to have similar values so if the locations are closer they are more likely to have similar values but if they are at a far distance then uh, they didn't have that similar values commonly referred to as Tobler first law of geography this is known as Tobler first law of geography then spatial autocorrelation is how well data points correlate with each other nearby points across a spatial area so if the points are nearby start and end points are nearby the in between values are more likely similar to each other but if it is far then we have to uh, th that values cannot be similar so up till now we have seen uh, what is a geographic object then uh, we have seen the boundaries and then now we are talking how to represent that objects on a computer screen using geo uh, this GIS softwares now we are coming to the point tessellation the process of tessellating the surface tessellation of a flat surface is the tiling of a flat surface using one or more geographic shape called tiles that no overlap and no gaps so particular area we have to divide into small small tiles that is called as tessellation small small tiles the first we will discuss it's of two types the first one is regular tessellation in a regular tessellation the cells are uh, of the same shape and size fields attribute value assigned to a cell is associated with the entire area occupied by the cell the three most common regular tessellation types square cells hexa square cells hexagonal cells and triangular cells so as shown in the diagram now we can use either square cells you see if you see all the uh, shapes uh, are of the same size then uh, hexagonal cells and then triangular cells all are of the same size these tessellations are known under various names in different GIS packages but most frequently as raster so uh, if it is of a regular size more frequently it is known as raster now irregular tessellation if the shapes are not same size okay shape is same but size is not same that time it is called as irregular tessellation more adaptive to geographic phenomena uh, region caught tree it is based on a regular tessellation of a square cell but takes advantage of case where neighboring cells have the same field values so that they can come together represent as one bigger cell so actually uh, uh, the thought behind is that ki if four cells are having same values and they are nearby then we can consider them together as a bigger cell it shows a chord tree uh, small 8 by 8 ra small 8 by 8 raster with three possible field values white green and uh, it's in the next diagram we will see this thing the chord tree that represents this raster is constructed by repeatedly splitting up the area into four quadrants which are called nw ne sc and sw the pro the procedure produces an upside down tree like structure known as a cord tree
So now we will see that diagram. So if you see uh, there are white color boxes. So uh, consider regular tessellation to all will be uh, all box size sizes will be same. The smaller sizes there now. So in that way. Now when these four come together, it is combined and one big cell has done. So this is the regular tessellation now. So this is uh, one more. So some small, some big boxes are there, some small boxes are there. Size are different. So this is called as a irregular tessellation, and this is the chord tree. This is the chord tree for same. So this part is this one. Okay. So we will start this big, uh, this bigger boxes. So this one, this one, then this blue, two blue. So they are here. Okay. Then uh, this one is over here, and these are the two whites, three whites. One, two, three. So they are represented over here. Now this we are starting with this node, so we are starting from this point, so it is having this one, and for this three we divert it like this. So the first one, the first one is uh, here. So here again we are uh, started with uh, this and this white. So this one and this one and this 4 is represented over here and this 4 is represented over here. So this way we have to represent that area in a chord tree. These are the other, uh, it is a similar representation but this is a another example. So you can see the things, the representation, chord tree representation in this diagram also. So overall what we have seen under this is what is a geographic object that is geographic uh, objects like road, trees, lands all these are geographic objects. Then second we have seen all these objects are having boundaries. The boundaries can be fuzzy or they can be crisp. Then these objects are represented on the computer screen using GIS software. Uh, after that we have come to the part of tessellation so that area is divided into small squares so the, uh, three types of shapes we can use either squares or hexagons or triangle uh, if all the shapes are of the same size then it is called as a regular tessellation uh, if nearby uh, shapes come together and form a bigger shape then it is called as a irregular tessellation uh, that's all for today's day. Thank you everyone.